Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be a long range outlook and we're just a general discussion about the weather, what's to come in the future, what to expect for your area, and that includes temperature, precipitation, all that good stuff. So uh, stay tuned and we'll be talking about that. If you would like to subscribe to this channel, uh, consider doing so. It's all about weather, what I do on this channel. And I talk about long range forecasts, long range outlooks, winter storms during the winter, spring storms during the spring, you know, hurricanes during the summer, all that good stuff, and winter forecasts. So uh, consider subscribing if you want to. If you don't want to, perfectly fine. Also, I'd like to uh, encourage you that if you want like to support this channel, especially during times like this, uh, I do have a Patreon. You can see this is $2 a month, $5 a month, or $10 a month. Any amount is perfectly fine, or you can do your custom amount, however much you want. Um, there's actually a fourth level of $25, and you can see there's a little reward for each uh, donation. And again, uh, this is completely optional. Um, I do post special stuff on here that I will be increasingly um, posting on there, so if you want to support that, consider doing so. That really means a lot, and that would help me possibly create like another I'm uh, trying to do a project of uh, possibly creating a model server of my own, a website like Tropical Tidbits. It's a lot of programming. It's a lot of money. So that would be awesome if I could get someday towards that goal. So uh, let's get into the video. Uh, right now we're looking at the GFS uh, forecasting this, uh, model. This is a pretty good model. It's done a fairly good job. It's been really on par with the European right now. They've been showing the same scenario. Uh, the GFS may be a bit more erratic, maybe a bit more inaccurate in some aspects, but overall you can see that it's going to be, a, there's going to be a period of quietness across the eastern United States. Now, yes, we have the system right here that is still occurring across the mid-Atlantic. That will be the only unsettling piece of weather across the eastern U.S. But notice that we could also be seeing some scattered severe thunderstorms. Uh, maybe not even severe, just uh, really scattered thunderstorms across the U U.S. through Friday, Thursday, and you can see they're just kind of hit and miss. They pop up, then they disappear. There's no real system associated with them. Uh, there is one that develops right here uh, later on, but that is uh, coming from a larger system that is occurring right now across the West Coast. That's a pretty big disturbance right there across the West Coast, Idaho, Montana, uh, Washington, Oregon. All those locations are getting a pretty good dose of rain out of that, and notice that, they, um, that this rain with from that system spreads into the eastern United States but again it's really disorganized it's more like daytime heating thunderstorms if you recall what that is that's basically when uh, uh, the thunderstorms use the daytime heat which obviously comes during the day uh, they use that to uh, pr kind of propel themselves into more of a uh, considerable status where they could produce some heavy rain heavy downpours some large to small hail depends on what the storm is and what the ingredients are around it and you can see that that's what would be happening especially since around this time especially associated with this high pressure it would be above average temperatures it's going to be like that heat wave that we talked about a couple uh i think on maybe two days ago i made a video about it and i was talking about the warm temperatures that are going to be in play for a good portion of the eastern u.s you can see that's going to be very warm a few areas of chilliness across texas maybe in the mid-atlantic but overall it's going to be warm and it, it, it's going to get very warm across portions of the locations it's going to be like early summer heat um, and that's that's finally deserved. I mean, you can see, for example, this is May 27th, two days after the Memorial Day, widespread 80s and 70s. Notice that um, the 80s get as high as uh, James Bay in Canada, which is uh, really close to where polar bears live. So this just goes to show you this will be unprecedented warmth across the uh, across the in North, southern Canada, uh, southern Canadian plains right there. And so just a very uh, summer-like pattern setting up. And that's finally what people have been deserving. I mean, it's been just so cold, so dreary across the United States, um, the eastern United States. A uh, huge, huge portion of the south uh, east and south central United States right here is just under a cloud cover today. Um, these locations are a little bit more lucky, but I know here in Chicago it's just been absolutely, you know, just miserable weather. And it has been for a good portion of the country, really. So we're finally going to be expecting some warmth, and you can see uh, it's going to be continuing for quite a while. And as soon as a cold front may seem to cop come out, you can see there's some chillier temperatures that warms back up. And this is where the GFS and European does, don't agree. The European keeps things much warmer while the GFS cools things down, but not for a while. You can see it brings the... Uh, temperatures back up to at least average and then it brings them back to above average within a few days you can see 80s and 90s back at it again so a uh, very er very early season heat is on its way and it seems like nothing will really be slowing it down okay uh, it seems like 
Uh, we're definitely getting towards an above average pattern towards when we come uh, the second half of May, which is what we're in right now. And as we get into June, which seems to be uh, the theme. Now, if you were to look at the Climate Prediction Center, it's showing uh, some, uh, I guess, some different uh, things for June. Um, for June, it shows a warmth across much of the... Uh, the, well, let's look at the first at the well. No, let's look at the one month outlook. So, this is for the month of June, right? And uh, sorry, this is for the month of May. This is what they're showing. Uh, this is what they showed, and you can see that they showed a below average across the eastern, northern U.S. and much above across the west and south. Now, this has generally been the case for much of May, except now for the second half, it's been more flipped, and uh, this was definitely valid. So now if we were to look at uh, the other forecast that it has, like the 6 to 10 day outlook, you could see that it shows widespread above average temperatures across a good portion of the U.S., just a little bit cooler across Texas. Everywhere else, it's above, if not well above average. And the precipitation remains above across central U.S., just below across the eastern, the northeast, basically, and the west, the, 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 nor the northwest. Okay, so now if we were to look at uh, the 8 to 14 day outlook, you could see that it shows much of the same. Um, it, very above average temperatures across a good portion of the country. Yet again, a little bit ch chillier across Texas. And the, uh, the precip is a bit um, more, uh, I guess, on a drier side, definitely. But you can see there's a lot of areas that are on uh, normal chances. So it could be either dry or wet. And there's uh, quite a bit that is below. And I guess quite a bit that's above, but a bit uh, in an odd fashion. Not really anything that is related to a giant pattern. Maybe just to a uh, related to like a certain day of thunderstorms or two that makes this 8 to 14 day outlook skewed towards above average precipitation. Um, if we were to look right now at the three month outlook, you can see this is what they're showing for May, June, July. So generally across summer, they're expecting more of a, a cooler pattern, possibly across the central U.S. if at all. But generally a warm, a warm summer, it seems to be on its way. And that seems pretty likely, pretty fair that a warm summer is on its way. Especially since the features are definitely there and uh, the May and April that just happened that were cold were kind of uh, caught off by surprise and they most likely won't continue into uh, they most like mo like most likely won't continue into summer the uh, the cool uh, the cool temperatures. This is a three to four week outlook into May 30th through June 12th which is getting into the very long range. And uh, again, a little bit below, possibly across the Dakotas, if at all, anywhere else, equal chances, most likely to be on a warmer side. I would say that, you know, these locations and uh, south are definitely gonna be warmer. These may be a bit cooler, but it looks as of right now to be pretty warm, generally across the United States uh, during this time frame. Uh, again, the cold air will be limited. If we were to go back to, like, say, the European model and look at the uh, the 500 millibar geopotential height, anywhere you see the, uh, the really the oranges and the dark yellow, uh, that's basically above average. And uh, you can see that they're going to be pretty predominant, other than this low pressure right here, which brings in a little bit of chillier temperatures, which it has been for the past several days across the eastern U.S., but um, it will continue to do so across the mid Atlantic, but mm, it will, you know, loosen it gr its gr grasp across the uh, eastern U.S. And we really start seeing some very, very uh, warm temperatures coming through. You can see even some of those red colors. Maybe a few. You can see that's a pretty big feature right there of chilly temperatures around Friday, May 29th. And uh, this is actually the first European model that is showing this cool temperature blast. Um, while the GFS at this time frame is also showing a cool weather, uh, cool air blast, but um, it has been a little bit more defined in the European uh, in the GFS models. If you were to look at it, it's yesterday's uh, midnight model run, you can see that it was uh, well stronger, well more str uh, way, way more stronger. If you were to look at a two meter temperature anomaly, it was down into the central U.S. into the southern U.S. the, the uh, below average temperatures, and if you were to look at the European model. Uh, it's it wasn't that significant. It was a bit chillier, but nothing too noteworthy. Mainly staying up in Canada. Will this could this possibly change for sure? We'll have to wait and see. But it de definitely looks as if a prolonged period of warmth is on its way um, across the United States. And the, the eight to fourteen and six to ten day outlook is definitely indicator an indicator of that. And they're not really showing much of this uh, feature in the in the in their outlooks. This cold, colder feature. So uh, they may have to adjust that. We'll see. You know, some of these cold blasts come out of nowhere. But I would say that the odds are right now for an above average pattern across the United States. Above average temperatures um, generally across much of the United States. Maybe excluding Texas. That's basically it. And parts of New Mexico. 
Um, so, again, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support me on Patreon or subscribe, consider doing so. Catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya.